It's a great honor to be here with John Speakman, Senior Director, Research IT here at NYU Langone Medical Center. How are you? Good. How are you? Good to be here. It's buzzing here, isn't it? It's buzzing. It's a great day. It's been a great tech symposium. Mm -hmm. uh, we're here at NYU, and, and um, I thought we'd start the conversation by learning about you, a little about you and your background. I moved to New York from London in the 90s uh, to work up the road from here, actually, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Uh, went to the National Cancer Institute for the first of uh, the first of the current generation, perhaps of, of moonshots, and then back here at NYU for five years now. Tell us about uh, research IT. Sure. And and what does that mean? Yeah. So we've been you know building and I uh, the, the foundations, the building blocks, if you like, for the last five years or so, for. Um, innovation at the, not quite the nexus, but the union really of, of life sciences and healthcare here at NYU Langone. And I think the last place, uh, the last piece, uh, ironically, is going to fall in place uh, this coming Monday when we're launching what we think is the most powerful HIPAA compliant high performance computing resource in maybe the world. I mean, these things are hard to tell, so uh, maybe someone will, will contradict that. But uh, it really is a sign for us that um, life sciences has entered the era of computation, as physics and the other sciences did quite some time ago. Silos seem to be have broken down in terms of technology marrying with, with life science. That's right. We need machine learning. We need um, modeling. We need all these things that have been a given elsewhere. And uh, we're hope and many people in the life sciences who are in this uh, kind of computational space, they work in the big national labs because they can't find anyone to give them the resources. So we hope that this is going to be, you know, a beginning of a new era for NYU and kind of the last piece of the infrastructure that we've put in place. And then we can start, you know, encouraging our terrific faculty here to, to put the pieces together and do things that play to our strengths here at NYU that you can't do anywhere else. That's what, that's what I hope is. So what do you imagine um, the opportunities that open up because of uh, having this kind of facility and, and this kinds of new, new tools and technology at your disposal? Right. So, so where we've been, I think, is tr is you know building up in the last few years a resource inside my team of data scientists that we realise that uh, at NYU have an, and similar to most big medical centres, we have this great resource of big clean data about our patients in our medical record, and um, we have I think uh, until recently struggled to provide that to the scientists. They can ask questions like, how many patients did we see last year with this and this and yet this to whom we did this and how are they doing? That's kind of a, a surprisingly hard question to answer to turn it to the, the, the obvious sequela, which is, can we do a clinical trial here on this, on just an NYU in this place? Do we have to have partners and so on? And so building that resource has been great for us. And also, when we can't do that, building a resource to you know, do what drug companies do and, and uh, run big multinational clinical trials from the base here in NYU, and we can now do that, which is awesome. And this computational piece is, is bringing the kind of basic science, yeah, the, the proteomics, the genomics, into this space too. And we, and we hope that our great scientists will put the pieces together, and if not, we'll give them a little nudge to, yeah. uh, to encourage them on the way. Have you seen a lot of progress, I guess is a better way to phrase it, over the last few years? Where are we? In terms of where science has gone, you know, I think we have been lucky that innovations in, for in cancer, for instance, immuno-oncology, have brought us to the point where, you know, at ASCO last week, they were starting to use the C word for, for cure, which is something that was a big no-no in cancer for a long time, that people are starting to visualize the fact that we can get to that state, which is really a, a first, I think. So that's very exciting. So I even five, ten years ago, you would have... Even you, one, two years ago... You wouldn't have even in heard that. In cancer world, you would not have heard the C word in, in these conferences. That this seems pretty extraordinary. Yeah, it's remarkable. I mean, we're not there yet, right. but people are starting to think about but the possibility. It. Yeah. yeah, I think in terms of more broadly, you know, technology and so on, we're seeing innovations, for instance, in basic sciences like uh, cryo-electron microscopy. You can start to see proteins and how they move and stuff like that. That's, again, a first that, you know, has required computation to get there, but we're now there. Here at NYU, we can do that right now. That's super exciting for basic scientists. Um, I think uh, the, the challenge is is that we haven't made much progress in terms of um, putting these big silos of health data together, building the kind of information commons that we were trying to do at NCI, and um, 
it's really, really hard because the data are not standard. And one of my big hobby horses is data standards. Mm -hmm. Everyone, it, everyone's got completely to sleep when they hear about data standards. But that's unfortunately, I think, what we have to do to deliver. So right now, we're relying on, I'm relying on big places like NYU to have enough patients in the system to deliver big, clean data, but it's not going to be a national or global data set, and that's really what I th think we have to tackle next. And it's not a, it's not a small thing. It's not, it is a moonshot. It's not something that you can break a bit off and do on its own. Do you think that's one of the reasons we're seeing companies like Amazon or Apple or Google um, move? more into healthcare. I mean, they, they have access to extraordinary data mm -hmm. uh, because of their, their core platforms. Um, it seems like there's a great opportunity for them to uh, leverage health data in very exciting ways. What you're seeing is the, the, the huge companies, the Apples and the Amazons, because they are, they are probably the only ones with the clout to establish a kind of de facto standard for data and say, you know, like the VHS, it doesn't really matter what standards groups get together and hammer out details of standards, someone's going to come, come along and just by virtue of the sheer clout uh, establish something. And we'll go along with it, no doubt, because that's the way to move forward. It, you know, rather than what agonize over the perfection of a standard, just take whatever one is the market leader and just dive in and become part of the ecosystem. Hmm. So, we're, you know, we're hedging our bets right now. We're certainly part of the Apple initiatives so here at NYU, but it's, you know, it's not yet clear hmm. whether there's a dominant kind of player that's going to establish the standards. Are you going to be opening up this data or platforms to entrepreneurs, to others that want to build and, and leverage, or is it not yet at that stage? It's not that it's not yet at that stage, and we certainly get a whole lot of pitches, join our network of this and that and the other. Um, I think we are just wary of joining too many because each, each one we join is a little bit of extra work, and that's part of the problem, I think, certainly in terms of us here at NYU Langone and big places like this, trying to leverage the energy of the uh, startups and the entrepreneurs we hear behind us. Um, these places are big and complex and Byzantine, and it's hard to find your way and figure out what we need. And so we get pitches from people, and most of them, very few of them are, yes, we want that right now, where do I sign? And very few of them are, this is the dumbest thing I ever heard. Most of them are in this, that's kind of cool, we don't have a use for it right now, and then we'll have a use for it two years down the road. And it was like, who was that guy? And I think there was a role, maybe it's for you guys, to come up with a a solution to that, you know, mm -hmm. the, when we want it, we want it now, but when we don't, we're not going to add it to our massive pile of stuff to do. Right, it becomes work right. instead of and I'll progress. Give you, yeah, I'll give you a for instance, actually. I uh, did some homework, which is against the rules for these talks, I know, <laughs> and uh, looked at your site yesterday to remind myself of who you had on, and found that my next door neighbor in Brooklyn is one of your uh, one, one of your interviewees. Tre tremendous. Who is Sabine Seymour. Oh, Sabine. Yeah, yeah, yeah from, from Super. Super. She, as you know, is at the nexus of kind of fashion and wearables and so on. And, you know, now I know that, um, you know, I anticipate that sometime in the next few years, someone will say, I need to send wearables, and I'll say, ah, oh, talk to Sabine. But... It doesn't scale. I can't right. as, much, right, as right. much I'd like to have it with my next-door neighbor. Right. We need a way to get that information to organizations like us on demand. And I, yeah. We don't really have that right now. Yeah. You know, I could Google it or whatever. But So there's there's a role for somebody there, yeah. I think. Um, and other than that, you've got to, if you're an entrepreneur, you want to come and talk to NYU, you've got to figure out a bit that you can break off and actually deliver in a reasonable time because your runway is short as, as if you've sure. got a startup and our runway is long but our plane's bigger so right. that's the hard bit is to find something you can break off in yeah. research certainly especially and work with us on good wisdom well thank you for all the great work I'm excited about uh, to hear this new technology that that's been established and and Today's uh, certainly been a lot of activity and a lot of great energy. No kidding. It's, we're psyched to have you here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.